the wisdom that is encrypted in the Torah is able to make one wise to occupy territory and establish and advance the kingdom of God. The Torah is a collection of instructions, the hidden wisdom in the Torah that will enable every business, every man, woman who is in the marketplace to establish a business that will go in with authority and dominion Hello and welcome to Secrets of the Torah with Dr. Tich Tanyanyo. Excited to have an opportunity to get into the Word of God. I want to welcome you today and I want you to invite a friend, a family member, invite somebody to watch along with you. Share this link with them and tell them this will change your life. We dig deep into the Word, we study the Word of God and we dig principles, I call it decrypting the hidden secrets of the Torah so that we know how to apply. Why the Torah? God gave us the word. God gave us the Torah to give us his mind, his will, his purpose, his plans, his agendas. And he encrypted into it secrets that we need to, to decrypt so that we can understand how to live in authority and dominion in the marketplace. People have asked me before, after I wrote a number of books, one of them being the Judeo-Abrahamic World Factor, which I have right here and they said are you implying that we you better get these books these books will really change your life judeo abrahamic wealth factor masters of the economy the birthing of a mega economy the rise of the african continent you need each one of these books in your library but people have asked me and said are you trying to say that we must become Jews? No, the Bible actually says that a Jew is not a Jew who is one outwardly, but inwardly. So the moment you got born again and washed in the blood of Jesus, you became a spiritual Jew. And the wisdom of the word of God applies in your life. And we need to go back to finding out what is it that God originally intended for us to, to do and what was his original plan for mankind. And that intention, that plan, that agenda, that mandate is hidden in the secrets of the Torah. So we endeavor to find secrets that are relevant, applicable in our lives today in order to dominate the marketplace, master our relationships and live life as God intended. Every single one of the principles and secrets that we find in the Torah we connecting with a New Testament principle or premise so that they can be they can be that unity the Bible says by two or three witnesses shall every truth be established so we going back he says I came not to eradicate or abolish the word or the Torah but to fulfill it to bring completion so we are riding on the principles that are in the Torah so knowing what God has said is going to help you to have a competitive advantage in the marketplace so let's get into today's lessons I welcome you right now to join me as we pray father open our hearts open our minds give us wisdom give us revelation we love your word we enjoy studying your word the entrance of your word brings light and it brings understanding to the simple give us understanding illuminate our parts give us clarity and revelation that we may live life according to your divine blueprint in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen welcome once again Let's have a great time. Well, this is actually episode number nine and uh, number eight. We've been going through the word of God, studying the word and applying these principles. And one of the things that we established in the last part of uh, the previous episode seven is we established that for a family or a group of people to succeed or to prosper, they must speak the same language. That was an analysis of Genesis chapter 11, and we're going to revisit that again a little bit today. They were at the same language. They came together and they said, let's build us a tower that reaches to heaven. Let's build us a city that we may all gather here and not be spread abroad across the nations, which was a direct violation of an instruction that God had given, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every moving thing that moveth upon the earth. So, so man in his degenerate or apostate state was disconnecting from the word of God, from the instructions of heaven and beginning to connect with the diabolic uh, um, foundation. So we established that for a people group to prosper, to succeed, they need to speak the same language within that group of people, speaking the same language amongst themselves, but also speaking the same language as the language of heaven. And that word language is quite a deep word. We will explore that in the next episode so that we clarify it for you. That means they must have the same imagination 
vision or blueprint. That means they must have the same environment. In order to produce the results that God wants us to produce, we must have the environment of heaven manifesting in our lives. When Jesus comes in the New Testament and he's speaking to the disciples, and they, they come to him and they say, Master, teach us to pray. He says, this is how you are to pray. You are to pray and say, Our Father who art in heaven and environment, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let the environment of heaven manifest here. Let the agenda of heaven manifest here. Let the language of heaven manifest here. Let the things that are in your realm become manifest in this realm. That was the prayer an enforcement of the kingdom of God and taking over of the kingdoms of this world and establishing or superimposing the kingdom of God here on earth. That's our mandate as the church. That's your mandate as a kingdom business person. That's your mandate as a family. How can we enforce the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven? However, in order to do this, we have a bit of a challenge. What is the challenge? Well, that's the subject for today. The subject that we're covering today is what I call the Nimrod factor. The Nimrod factor. What is the Nimrod factor? Let's read in Genesis. And we're going to read Genesis chapter 10. And we'll read verse 8. Let's read from verse 8. He's giving us genealogies. You know those parts of the Bible that we sometimes find boring? In there are many amazing secrets that we cannot even begin to talk about. But it says in verse 8, And Cush beget Nimrod, and he was the first to be a mighty man on earth. He was a mighty hunter before Hashem. Therefore it is said like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Hashem. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Erech, Ahed, Kalna, and the, in the land of Shinar. Okay, from the land of Asher and so on and so on. So he is introducing us here to a man whose name is Nimrod. Very interesting name. We could go into the implications of the origins of his name, and that's an exciting research and study in of itself. The only one challenge that we have is the statement that he makes here, that he was, let me read it again. It says, like a mighty hunter before Hashem. There was a saying that became popular, like a mighty hunter before Hashem. Now, there's a bit of a challenge here when we read it, it, it translated from Hebrew into English because before Hashem or mighty hunter before Hashem carries the implication that he was a mighty man before God. But the word before in Hebrew comes from a word that connotes against or opposing. So he was, he became a mighty hunter. He was a mighty hunter against God. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter against Hashem. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. His kingdom, Babel, was the kingdom that we're going to read about in chapter 11, which was a kingdom set against God. It was a system that was fighting against the purposes and the agendas of God. Everything that God represented, Babylon opposed. I could give you example after example. Babylon was established on a system of greed. The kingdom of God is centered in and around generosity. The kingdom of Babel was centered around fear. The kingdom of God is centered on faith and belief in God. The kingdom of Babel was centered around a selfish, self-centered, self-preservation ethos. But the kingdom of God is centered in and around sacrificing of yourself and of your resources and giving generously to others and being a blessing to others. The kingdom of Babel was centered in and around 
debauchery, sexual perversion, and, and all kinds of evil and vile things, and all the evils that you can imagine today were birthed out of this system of Babylon. The financial systems that are oppressive, the financial systems that bring poverty and oppression to humanity were birthed out of Babylon. The military systems that were that are designed to oppress people and bind and cause people to go into slavery were birthed in Babylon. The establishment of slavery as we know slavery today where people are held against their will to work and to build infrastructure and and amenities for a nation against their own will that was birthed in Babylon. So all of these evils that we're having to deal with today were birthed out of Babylon. Babylon sought to establish a one world religion, one world order, one world mili military system, one world monetary system. All of these were centered against the plan and the purpose of God. So we're going to talk about the Nimrod factor today and help you to understand how this applies because this is so important for every single one of us as believers to understand because lack of understanding in this area is going to limit your ability to function in the marketplace. Well, this is Secrets of the Torah with Dr. Tich Tanyanua. Join me after this break. Don't you dare go away. You better stay connected because this is going to change your life. God bless you. In a society where poverty has been normalized, we need to go back to God's original plan for mankind. In the Financial Success Kit, my dad explores this financial blueprint and shares wisdom that will help you experience success in the marketplace and in your personal finances. In Meditations of a Kingdom Financier, the Judeo Abrahamic Wealth Factor, Masters of the Economy, and Birthing a Maker Economy, you will learn how to create and manage personal wealth, how to be a blessing to your tithes and seed how to master your personal economy and move your family to a place of financial freedom. Above all, you will learn how to advance the kingdom of God and dominate in the marketplace. In the midst of famine, recession, and political instability, the wisdom in these books will enable you to remain stable and focused. Order your set of the Financial Prosperity Kit today. Now, let's get back into the lesson. Hey, I can see you love the Word of God. Welcome back. It's so good to have you. We're having a great time here decrypting the secrets, the hidden meaning in the Torah so that we can live in authority and dominion in the marketplace according to the divine blueprint of heaven. We're talking about the Nimrod factor, the Nimrod factor. And we are studying the history behind this man called Nimrod. We've read in Genesis chapter 10, an introduction of how Nimrod was the first of the mighty hunters, a man who established a military system. And the Bible says he was the first man, mighty man against God. His system was bent and set on fighting against the will and the purpose of God. And that's what we're looking into so that you and I can understand how to function in the midst of a system that is everything that is fighting against the kingdom of God. We're living in a generation right now where the church is struggling to have church services and meetings and events. Why? Because the Nimrod system is still oppressive. This Nimrod system wants one world order of worship, one world order of governance, one world order of financial policies and principles, one world order of sexual perversion and debauchery and depra depravity. So Satan is working hard to bring humanity under oppression, under slavery. But we need to understand that the word of God propagates for us to, or pushes for us, sorry, to be free from the oppressive system of Babylon. You know, one of the interesting things that I find quite intriguing is how the European Union is working so hard to reestablish the Babylonian system. They even went as far as establishing the European Union Parliament to look exactly like the building of the Babylon, the Babylon Tower, the Tower of Babel that they endeavored to build. And it looks, I mean, it looks like an incomplete building. What, what are they endeavoring to do? To copy the pattern of Babylon in order to establish oppression. When you jump over to the book of Revelation, you, you hear about the, the, 
the creature that had the horns and the ten horns and so on and then one horn that had the little mouth and was a voice that kept talking now you begin to understand the picture that God showed us in Genesis chapter 10 and 11 is exactly the same picture that we see in the book of Revelation when God begins to show us how the beast and the system of the beast is going to operate and how it's going to seek to oppress humanity bring them into slavery bring them into one world order of religion one format of worshiping one format of financial policies and principles and currencies one world order of a military system that governs the whole world one world order of oppression etc etc there's quite a whole lot of stuff that is exciting that the word of god has made clear to us if we would just take time to read and study the word of god but anyway let's move on and uh, re uh, refocus on our notes so nimrod became very influential using a very interesting principle it's called the principle of fear the principle of fear the bible says they came to a place or a valley they were migrating from the east and they came to a valley that was called shina or shina the valley of shina and uh, that that talks about two rivers it's the, the valley where Babylon was built. They had two major rivers and they built themselves the city on the banks or in between these two rivers. And these two rivers are the rivers, the Tigris and the river Euphrates. Now, if you know Genesis chapter 2, where he says the river split and it had four heads, it mentions these two rivers right there in Genesis chapter 2. But now we're seeing these this, um, this um, group of people that is migrating and they decide to settle in a place called Shina or Shina in this valley. Because of the rivers, the valley was extremely fruitful and productive. It was rich in vegetation, rich in plant life, rich in animals, rich also in predators. So you had all your carnivorous animals that were there ready to eat everything that they could find, including human beings. So the human beings that have been given dominion in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, where God says, and God bless them and says, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every moving thing that moveth upon the earth, the cattle and so on. God gave man dominion over creation, including the lion, the tiger, the bear, and every other predator that was seeking to kill him. But because man was in a depraved state, man had disconnected from the word of God, man had disconnected from his original place of authority and was not functioning in the place of revelation or light that comes from above. He now was operating in fear. What he was supposed to dominate was dominating him. What he was supposed to control and subdue and have dominion over was controlling him and subduing him. So Satan now created a scenario that was conducive for his agenda. He raises up this man who the Bible says, we read it here, was a mighty hunter. That means he was very apt with his weapons, with his very advanced in weapon development at that time, which gave him military power, economic power, political power, and spiritual power from a negative perspective. So everything was working for him because Satan's agenda was unfolding. So here comes this Nimrod, mighty hunter. He has the ability to go into a territory and reduce the ratio of predator against versus all the other existing animals within that ecosystem. So he is now controlling. So now they trust him. They have confidence. This is our hero. This is our leader. Now, isn't that the picture of politics today? What do politicians offer us? They offer us safety. We're going to build you bridges. We're going to build you roads. We're going to help you build the economy. We're going to give you medicine. We're going to give you safety. We're going to reduce crime. We're going to close our borders so uh, foreign elements don't come in and invade our borders. What is all of that? It's the political rhetoric that is designed to give you a sense of confidence that the one who is speaking 
is trustworthy. And that's how Nimrod got his authority and his dominion. That's how he influenced the people, by giving them the promise of safety and that allayed their fears of the predators because this land was beautiful agriculturally everything was conducive and they need everything they needed was in this land so they looked and they said "Mm, okay it's beautiful land but the predators are going to kill us but if you can take care of that we can vote you to be our ruler so nimrod becomes the ruler but unfortunately he was a ruler against the kingdom of god so we need to always pray in our countries to have have rulers, kings, presidents, prime ministers that fear God and love people. Those are the two main major characteristics of a person who becomes a president for a country. The fear of God. He honors God, but he also has a love and a respect for humanity. Any president, any leader that does not have those two characteristics will be an oppressor, an oppressor of the people, and he will breathe and breathe out injustice and wickedness over the people. Secret of the Torah. So, Nimrod becomes a powerful man. He's, he assumes power and authority in the land. And now he's gaining his political momentum. His career politically is flying. He's controlling the animals. And then he says, here is our national agenda. We will channel the fiscal policy of our nation to building a city. Wow! And everybody says, yes! A city means we are all safe, we are all controlled, we are all confined, and our economy or economic model is based on us existing within this ecosystem. And guess what? Not only are we going to build a city and have commerce and have trade and have business, that's all good. We are also going to build a tower to heaven. Now, again, here's another secret. When we read it in our conventional Bibles, we don't get the truth of what was happening here. Nimrod was not just saying, let's build a tower that gets to heaven. His agenda was to have war against God. He says the only way to fight against God is for us to go into his domain. Let's go into his, his, his realm. Let's go into heaven. Let's build a tower to heaven and we want to fight against God. That is the ethos, the center, the foundation of every demonic system, every demonic governance, government system, every demonic financial system, every demonic worship system is centered around fighting against God. Where does that come from? It takes us way back. Jesus says, I beheld Satan falling from heaven as lightning. And then the word of God declares in the book of Revelation, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. What is he saying? The the war that has existed is an economic war. Who runs the economy? Who influences the flow of money and wealth and the movement of currencies in a nation, in a people group? The one who controls the money is the one that controls the mindset and the frame of mind and the belief system, the value systems of that particular people group. That is why we need good governance. That's why we need good leaders. Bible says when the wicked are in authority, the people groan. But when the righteous are in power, the people will shout and celebrate. And that's what we want. We want nations that are filled with good government and good order so that the people can rejoice praise god forevermore this is really exciting but we're seeing this this is all what the bible is revealing to us helping us to understand so nimrod becomes influential using fear and they come to china the place where two rivers are and they establish a babylonian system slave masters are masters first at creating an environment You can never become a slave master without controlling environments. Any person that has ever been an oppressor, a dictator who's killed people, oppressed people, was always a master of creating environments. So if you don't master creating environments based on what we've already covered in previous episodes, you will always be subject to the one who's a master of creating environments. Hitler was a master of creating environments. Mussolini was a master of creating environments. Stalin was a master of creating environments. Osama bin Laden created a global environment that is that became so oppressive that you cannot travel in inter- 
international airports without taking off your shoes and your belt and everything. That was all because of one system of oppression that caused fear globally. So fear is a tool that Satan uses to move people into a place of oppression and the people that are living and thinking fear become irrational in their response to any form of stimuli that comes against them. So slave masters are masters first at creating an atmosphere and then they create an environment or a, 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 a condition that pushes the subjects or those that are afraid to live in a certain format. Now, I don't want to go, go and adventure into that one too much because I don't want our content to come offline. So I'm going to leave that one at that. Without fear, people cannot be controlled. Without fear, people cannot be controlled. I remember having a conversation with a person who was um, a high-ranking manager in a certain organization. And at that time, a country was going through agricultural recession and economic recession. And they said, let's produce less beer because we don't have enough of the crops and the grain that goes into manufacturing beer. And a high-ranking government official came and gave the instruction to say, you must continue to produce as much beer as we need. We need as much alcohol in the country as possible. And they said, but we don't have enough uh, of the crops. He says, we will make sure we source it for you and you continue to manufacture as much alcohol as is needed. And then in the conversation, he says, why is this so important? He says, because sober people are difficult to govern. We cannot govern people that are thinking clearly, people that have a clear imagination, people that have the authority and the power and the dominion to create the right environment, people that have the ability to yatsa, to produce and to bring into existence realities in line with their imagination. So what must we do? Let's keep people inebriated. Let's keep people drunk enough. Let's keep people not thinking soberly enough to keep them in the place of oppression. Without fear, people cannot be controlled. Mass fear opens the door to control. Satan controls people using a principle called mass fear. When he creates an atmosphere of mass fear, we're afraid of corona, we're afraid of the flu, we're afraid of Ebola, mass fear, we're afraid of World War Four, mass fear, whatever, we're afraid of economic recession. When the masses are afraid, they lose their ability to imagine, to speak right, to walk in light, to walk in revelation, and guess what happens? They disconnect from the words of God and connect with the words of Satan. That's exactly what happened in Genesis. When man ate the fruit, he disconnected from God, ate the fruit, and when God came, the sound of heaven came into the garden, and guess what? He says, we hid ourselves because we were afraid. Mass fear. There were just two people in the garden. That's mass fear. The whole population of humanity in the world was afraid, and they came under the control of Satan. So we need to understand that disconnecting from a fearful system will enable us to function in God's agenda. Nimrod offered a solution to the people and that gave him control. They said, let us live in a place of safety. Let's live in the protection that he is offering. So we, we, we endorse the city. We endorse the building of the tower. Though it's against the will of God, we will do it because that's our safety. That's our solution. But God was not happy with it. There was, this was a direct violation of what God had already said in Genesis. Man was to dominate creation fearlessly and run and dominate the events of the world. But now because of fear, man was afraid and disconnected from his agenda. We learn that the loss of revelation or light will result in the loss of our dominion factor. Let me say that again. The loss of revelation, light from heaven, will result in the loss of our dominion factor. This is why we need secrets of the Torah to help you extract revelation from the word of God that enables you to function in your God-given dominion. Minds that are darkened and without revelation will imagine wicked imaginations. Man's mind was to function under the light of God's word. Man's mind, your mind, is supposed to function under the light of 
of the word of God, the revelation that comes from the word of God. In Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to verse 32, God makes it so clear that their minds were darkened. They had the absence of light and revelation from God. And what happened? They began to reproduce ideas that were diabolical. Every, every form of perversion, sexual perversion, violence, gender-based violence, homosexuality, lesbianism, all of this was synonymous with Babylon, with Sodom, with Gomorrah. It was a system against the plan and the purpose of God. And what happened? People began to imagine vile things. And the Bible says God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Man, no longer making use of women the way that was proper and vice versa. So every kind of perversion was introduced. Why? Because Satan had caused fear and a disconnection from the mind and the will of God. The conclusion, let your mind be flooded with the light of the word of God. That's why Ephesians prays. I pray that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding. The Amplified says being flooded with light. We need light that comes from the word of God. We need to get back into that place where the word of God is the center of everything we do. The Bible says the entrance of his word brings light and it brings understanding to the simple. And that's what I want us to pray right now. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that your word is true. Thank you that your word is light. The entrance of your word brings light and it brings understanding. Give us light and understanding of your word. Open up our hearts and our minds that the secrets of the Torah, the principles of your word will begin to once again illuminate our lives and flood our lives that we may live and walk according to your divine agenda and divine will. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters that this word will begin to give them greater dominion in the marketplace as they disconnect from Babylon and from the Nimrod factor and begin to connect with the kingdom of God and activate the principles of the secrets of the Torah in Jesus mighty name. Hey, I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of this lesson today. Please listen to it again. Share it with as many friends as you can because people need to hear this truth and begin to walk in the revelation and authority of the word of God. This is Dr. Tich Tanya Nua coming to you from Secrets of the Torah. God bless you. Now that you've been prepared for success in the marketplace, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow Dr. Tich Tanya Nua on all his social media platforms. You'll be kept up to date with all the exciting new resources that we will create for you. You can also sign up for our coaching programs at drtitch.com. It's your time to dominate in the marketplace.